Hi, I'm Chris Hawkins, and today we're going to take a look at using triple field points in Revit to drop a few points into the model. Okay, so we're in Revit 2018. The add-in applies, I believe, all the way back to what, Revit 2016, possibly 2015. And just to notice, uh, add-in is also available for, uh, for AutoCAD uh, users as well. So we'll quickly jump over to uh, actually creating these points. You'll see there's, um, there's a few kind of uh, uh, hierarchies here um, as far as uh, the field point in entity itself. Uh, it comes with a whole series of tags. I mean, we've got what, about seven or eight in here. Uh, some that are uh, 3D, um, some that are just 2D. You can actually create categories uh, however you want to organize this um, to basically filter down and kind of group these uh, existing entities whether you might create a 2D and a 3D category and just when you click on 3D only the 3D will display. Um, just a, a, another way to help you organize things. Uh, you get into uh, your description and uh, group and, and placement whether you're going to place it or not. Uh, grouping is just another way of kind of filtering uh, through uh, what the description is going to be. Uh, we've got uh, starting point numbers uh, depending on where your prefix uh, uh, again, you have the ability to set a prefix or a suffix and what that point number is going to be. Whether Here we're placing manual points, so we're, you know, it says starting point where we're really just going to be placing one, well, one at a time. And then you can have a series of attributes down here, uh, to whatever you want it to be to apply to your particular need at that, for that project. And then depending on how we're placing these, we can place it at the work plane. If we're selecting an object at its snap elevation, um, if for some reason we want to base everything at a certain elevation uh, above the plane or whether or not we want to force everything at a, at a fixed elevation if we don't want things to hop in the Z direction uh, based on what we're picking. So for uh, right now, I'll just leave this as test. I won't play, worry about doing anything else in here. We're really just looking at points right now. Uh, so I'll hit place and we can just come in and you can, you can free place anywhere. You can place, you know, on uh, any, any snap element that's... Uh, that's in, that's in your project. And simply by doing that, we can exit out of the command. We can take a look at uh, field point properties. I can select one of those points, finish, and then here's that information. There's the coordinates of that point within the project. Um, that was the first one that we uh, input. That's the uh, elevation within our project. And you, know, it's, the, you start seeing the information that I showed you in the uh, setup settings are now integrated into that point. Say okay to that. Take a look at another type of input mechanism. We can input over uh, place uh, trade. Actually, let me show you grid points real quick because this is the, the big, one of the big uh, benefits of field points is placing points, uh, a lot of points very quickly. Let's change our point uh, symbol entity. We'll call it a square X. Um, I've changed this description to just be like column center lines. And uh, you have the option to decide how these points are going to be numbered relative to uh, your grid, you know, top to bottom, left to right, serpentine, whatever you want. We'll just leave this as uh, the first option right now. We'll hit place, and all you simply have to do is select one of the uh, column grids. And uh, it goes out and uh, looks at the extents of your project for where all the grids exist. And we'll then go back through and, and add these uh, points to the column intersections everywhere. I believe that was probably added like 75 some points in a couple of seconds. So just that uh, example alone shows you how quick and easy uh, this is uh, to, uh, to add points to your project. Uh, we'll look at uh, place tracing points right now. Uh, again, we can come in, select whatever type of symbol we want. And... Uh, whether we're going to place a single point, a single point with offset, a double point. Um, so this really starts looking at potentially what you're tagging. Uh, if, if we're going to, we can place like the face of a wall, um, but maybe we, want, we might want to offset that off to the center of the wall. So depending on what the thickness of the wall is, you would set the offset. Um, or if you had, you know, a system that actually had a center line built in, you would just maybe s select the actual center line. Um, We'll look at, a, at the single point right now. Um, we can select, the, again, the elevation of where we want this to go. 
Um, and now we'll take, take a look at how we're going to trace this. Um, I'm going to place this at uh, intermediate points. Um, or I can just say I'm going to place it at, at every pick point. If I kind of know how I want those points to be generated, um, we'll leave this at uh, zero millimeters and at every pick point. So now as I hit place, I can come down here and just say um, I'm going to face of the wall or face the end emollient, door opening, center, emollient in between, and back, and so on and so forth on down the line. Let's go to the next step here. We can place points over a family and, you know, familiar with how families work within Revit or just blocks in AutoCAD, this can be a very uh, uh, beneficial uh, data entry. Um, so I can select a family and let's come over here and just use one of these uh, single doors. So it's actually telling me the family that I'm going to place this over and I'm going to now just place it over the insertion point. Click place. Well, this is I'm telling it what the insertion point is. And then finish. That's the insertion point for that door. So after we have all of these points in the project, uh, next step, if you actually wanted to push this out for, again, use by a total robotic station to place these points and shoot these points out in the field, we can export this out to uh, FieldLink. It'll come back in and asks us, do we want to select specific points? Or again, I'm just gonna say select all from current view. Again, it's gonna come back through and tell us the total number of points that are in our project. And then it's gonna give us a, more, a further breakdown as to there were manual points created, there were tracing points created, there were grid points created, there were points over the path created. Um, I can choose all or none of what I mean, what are individual uh, groups, uh, point types. And uh, as, I've, as I get through exporting things, it's going to start keeping track of what, uh, what, what has been exported. Do I want to export it again? What layers do I want to put these points on um, when I export them? Because when you get into the field, you have the ability to sort through these points um, through the user interface. Um, so you're not looking at all the points at one, one time. Um, I come down to the bottom of this dialog to select uh, my CAD entities. So you not only have the opportunity to push out points, you have the opportunity to push out the actual CAD geometry so you can uh, analyze these points in relationship to actual project uh, geometry. Uh, I can select background entities. I can select all from the current view. So if I just wanted to spit out everything the way this view shows, um, I can just select all. It's going to push this out to uh, wherever I'm going to push it, uh, network, local machine, whatever, and um, I can hit OK on that, and we'll, and that'll push out. So that's all for today on Trimble Field Points. If you'd like to learn more, please contact your local building point rep, or check out our YouTube channel. Thanks again.